Listen, never forget that you are insufficient. Never. 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 It is something you bring to the presence of God every day. He has made you strong, but you don't, your confidence is not in your riches, it's not in the degrees you have accumulated. Your confidence is in Him. Only such a person can minister unto the Lord continually the way Samuel did. Your receptacle is refreshed. It is adequately aligned for, for reception. Are you with me? Don't forget this. Now, when you begin to minister before the Lord, many times God wants to meet you in a certain place in the spirit. You know, the Bible reveals that there are diversities of places in Christ Jesus. And it is because of those differences in locations in Christ Jesus that um, the tongues you speak is not the same every time. Because it's coming from a different place. It's, it's, it's a language from a place. And God may want you to migrate to another place in the realm of the spirit because that's where the answers that you seek, the support that you seek, the reinforcement that you seek is domiciled. And, and so in this arrangement, the transport system is what we call the song of ascent. There are 150 chapters of the book of Psalms. The book of Psalms contains four books. And in these four books, there are 15 Psalms that are songs of ascent. Songs of ascent are, are modes of transportation in the spirit. And so if God wants you to migrate to another place, he wants you to move to another arena, what he does is that he, through his spirit, he begins to precipitate a song. This song is not so that you can wax an album. The purpose of this song is that it's a means of transportation. It's a song of ascent. It, 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 it gives you the capacity to gain ascendancy in the spirit. And many times, that song will come to your knowledge and you'll sing it, and you are likely to forget it thereafter, forever. Because it came for that moment. So one of the things you need to expect if you begin to minister before the Lord is the, the song of ascent. Sometimes it's called the songs of Zion. There is a country called Zion. That's the kind of song they sing there. And Zion happens to be the administrative quarters of God's estate. And uh, it gives you a song so that you can transport to an administrative location where the office of the Christ can minister to you most adequately. When last did you sing unto the Lord a new song? When last? Long ago. 25 years ago. It means you were spiritually healthy 25 years ago because the songs of ascent, when it comes through your spirit, is an indication of spiritual health. It is God attempting to enable you to get to the place where you can find help. All of help to satisfy mortal insufficiencies are tied to a certain throne in the spirit. And the Bible calls it the throne of grace. It's an office. It's a portfolio in the spirit. That's where grace is administered. And you cannot be in search of grace and not be intentional about your quest for grace. When you begin to minister before the Lord and you begin to strip before him and you begin to unveil your insufficiency, which is a requirement for grace, he drops the ladder sometimes. The ladder is in a song. So that song is a migration instrument. As you, as you sing it, you get sucked into the spirit. Oh, you don't understand what I'm talking about. Some of you do. You know, you know, <laughs> hallelujah. 
As you sing it, you get sucked. As you sing it, you are being removed far away from the influence of the flesh and a new layer of overwhelming consciousness of the glory of God begins to saturate you. It's a migration. When you begin to consistently experience this kind of migration, it will be clear to you that the spirit realm, even though it is unseen, it is more well structured than the visible realm. Turn your Bible if you have one. Psalms 137. We'll try from verse 1 to 4. Psalms 137 from verse 1 to 4. I just got this one. This is for migration. New every morning. No, don't help me. I, I want you to learn to faithfulness. Oh, oh Lord. song, okay, at the right time. At Gunfire. When you travel on this, this gangway, when you travel on it, the viscosity of the presence of God is intensified, and that's what opens up the eyes of your understanding. You begin to know the things that you were not taught. You begin to understand the things that you did not learn. You plug into the educational system of that frame of reference. It is beyond this world. If you know what I'm talking about, you will not respect anything that is visible. Why we look not upon the things that are seen, for the things that are seen are temporal. God opens your eyes to see eternal things. Well, I won't tell you what I saw. I saw, I saw something. I saw many things. If you live that way, oh my God, oh my God, you will know that there's nothing, there is no one like Jesus. Great is the now, that's, that's a song for, for this night. So, once upon a time, we're going to pick up this song again. Then we'll travel with it. Then the things I'm touching there, I will tell you. And then, don't worry, calm down. All right, the song of the Spirit. Are you there in the book of uh, Psalm 37? Good. But the rivers of Babylon, there we sat down. Yea, we wept when we remembered Zion. We hung our harps upon the willows in the midst thereof. For there 
that carried us away captive required of us a song and they that wasted us required of us myth saying sing us one of the songs of Zion how shall we sing the Lord's song in a strange land even the people that took them captive knew that there were some songs called the songs of Zion and no one was willing to sing it so that was why they actually went to captivity because there, there, there are records in the history of Israel where they sang songs and God discomfited their enemies. The songs of Zion are given to you. They are given to you from the spirit realm. And when you begin to sing it, God begins to suck you in. And the consciousness of the realm of your reality begins to become emboldened. That is what it means when the Bible says, magnify the Lord. It is in that context when you are sucked in that God is magnified. It becomes big. Your perspective changes, your problems become small. And in spite, and God may not even change your problems. The problems will still be there. But if you have gone deep, the problems won't have authority over your soul anymore. Because the Lord has become magnified. God must make you win in your soul before you win on the ground. That's the formula. When the thing doesn't influence you again, it doesn't have authority over your soul again, then God will take it away. But you won. That's why the Bible says, in all these things, in the thing, we are more than conquerors. The thing didn't change. It's just that you... You went into God and saw how big God was, and you knew you were still a victor in the thing. It means the thing doesn't have any authority over your soul anymore. You are a victor. Your victory has been as affirmed in spite of the thing. Then God now takes the thing away. If you don't know what it means to travel, through the opening of songs in the spirit you don't know what i'm talking about it's an opportunity for god to become magnified hallelujah i say hallelujah do you still remember that the scripture says god gives songs in the night because he wants in the midst of that darkness he allows your spirit to travel to the, to the agency of new songs. And then that night ends because the sorrow and the weeping that was supposed to endure for that night is truncated by the regime of the song of the spirit that God makes available to you. And you travel out of the influence and the authority of that challenge because you migrated in the spirit. So you are likely to stumble upon a song in the spirit that will become your means of transportation that will suck you into God and it will strip every circumstance of your authority to manipulate your soul. It's still part of the proceedings. 